What is up Borough fans and welcome back to the channel. Um, this is late but this is my review of the Bristol City versus Middlesbrough match. Um, it's only late just because I've been working so it's hard to get around with doing a video and working at the same time because I do long hours so I'm coming back and I'm absolutely shy so all I want to do is go to bed. But let's get into it and let's talk about the game which happened on Saturday, the half 12 kickoff, which was on Sky Sports. So, anyone that went to the game, bravo. Um, I hope that you weren't disappointed. Um, I felt disappointed a little bit just because of the way we played and the result we got. I felt that we deserved a lot, lot more, just like Woodgate said in his. Um, interview at the end um, he felt we dominated the game and I couldn't agree more with the man um, the first half from Borough was absolutely brilliant from my eyes anyway I thought we played brilliantly um, we attacked the ball we pressurised them we did a lot of passing to feet um, and we were always attacking their goal non-stop but for some reason it just wasn't going in um, we had an early chance where it was like a scramble in the box. And I think it was Fletcher, um, from where I could see anyway, um, that could have put it in the back of the net, but just couldn't get to grips or get a toe to it. Um, so we could have gone one up there and the game at halftime would have been one all. Um, so we get to the point where they've got a winger coming down on the right hand side and McNair is with him and you know we're watching it and McNair's literally right in front of us with this attacker and we're all shouting at him just go in tackle him take the ball off him but he keeps standing back and it's infuriating to watch because you can see what you need to do but for some reason he can't and I don't know why. Um, that must be getting put in on the training sessions. I'm pretty sure Woodgate said he was a bit annoyed with how the goals were conceded. But what McNair's doing, I don't know. I don't know why he's just not stuck a foot in. Even gone for a, a foul, you know. Take, Go for a team foul. Simple as that. And nothing hopefully will come from that free kick. But he doesn't do anything about it. He lets him have enough space to flick the ball in. And there's Casey Palmer with inches of space all on his own to head the ball straight in the back of the net. And we go in 1-0 down, which is infuriating, especially when we dominated the first half by a mile. We were the better side from the off. And to go in 1-0 down is hard to take, really is. Um, you feel very deflated as a fan. Uh, so from... When that whistle went, I was just like, oh, I hope Woodgate goes in there and has a right go at him and gives him a good kick up the ass, basically, because to dominate a game and go 1-0 down is very, very hard to take. Um, but being a Borough fan, we should all be used to this, but we're still not because we see the side that we love dominate games and yet they still get punished for stupid little mistakes and it's infuriating. Um but no, on the first half as well, some of the players, you know, brilliant performances from the likes of uh, Clates. You know, not everyone's cup of tea, but I love the man. I think he's a brilliant footballer. Very strong in that defence. Uh, defence? Midfield? God, I can't get my team right. Um, and massive shout out to Dale Fry. You know, he took on the captaincy at 22 years of age and led out his Borough team. And what a performance he did, you know, always jumping up for headers, getting into tackles and playing brilliant football and to have him and a fully fit Daniel Ayala in the centre of our defence is going to be a very strong wall in front of uh, Randolph and I think that's what we're desperate for. So as soon as Ayala's back, I think we're going to have a better strategy for set pieces as we've got two very tall centre-backs in Ayala and Dale Fry. So I think this sloppiness on corners and free kicks and these attackers who are getting the headers are going to struggle when Ayala is back fit and those two are in the back wall. Um, Johnson, again, I thought he had another fantastic game in the first half. What a player he has turned into. 
you know, he, he didn't get a sniff under Pulis. And he comes back from loan from Sheffield United. And he is outstanding. We have really needed someone like that. And he's just come back and he's shown us what we've been missing. And it's brilliant to see. Um, Lewis Wing, I thought he had a good game. I didn't think it was his best. He, I know can do better, definitely, by a mile. Ashley Fletcher, again, him and Britt are really good up front. They're linking up perfectly. And it's just really good to see a good partnership between the two. Um, Jick Steele and Bowler, um, I thought they did really well. Um, sometimes a bit sloppy at the back, so they've just got to work on that. Um, but other than that, I thought they were some of the standout players in the first half. Um, and then, you know, we go into the second half and we're hoping as Borough fans, you know, let's get an early goal. And, you know, let's get straight into them, you know, so we can just pile the pressure on Bristol City there. They're, they're probably feeling a little easier now with going 1-0 up. Um, but that wasn't the case. Borough came out, um, guns blazing, and we were fantastic. They had their odd chances. There's no doubt about it. Bristol City are a very strong side. I'm not going to deny that because uh, they've got some quality players um, from what we've seen on Saturday. But Borough were just far dominant. Um, and then comes up to the left wing McNair on the ball gets a cross in and it was Taylor Moore who has got Britt right behind him and in, and he's gone to block it and it's come straight off his knee straight in the back of the net Borough fans are going absolutely mental um, you know Bristol City fans have gone very very quiet because they were all singing when they were 1-0 up and then as soon as we get one back, silence. Uh, so that felt great. And from there on, you could see the Borough wanted it more and more. And to see that from a Borough fan perspective is something we've been missing for the past couple of seasons. I'd probably say since Karanka left. Um, and we've got this chance on the ball. He gets to Clates and he picks out an absolutely brilliant pass. Um, which Taylor Moore manages to just clip. And I mean, if he got a full contact on it, it wouldn't have landed perfectly in Britt's feet. Um, and we probably wouldn't have got the second goal, but he clips it straight into Britt's feet. And, you know, Britt's a very strong lad, so we're expecting him just to hold off the defender, which he does really, really well. Takes one look up, places it straight in the bottom corner. Borough fans go mental yet again. And that's... It's a hundredth goal. It's a hundredth appearance. And the man had a baby on Thursday, which is amazing. What a day for him. Um, and, you know, he's still going to get haters. He's going to get that all the time because that's what Borough fans do for some reason. You know, guy misses two penalties. It's all get him out, etc. But he is a fantastic player and we're lucky to have a striker like that. We really are. Yes, we've got youngsters, but when you've got the partnership of Brit and Fletch in your team, I don't think you want to change it just so a youngster can get a chance. Yes, if one of them has one of the games where it's absolutely abysmal and they have done nothing and, you know, it's to the point where you're just like, oh my God, this is ridiculous. Then give a young lad a chance like Steve Walker. But yes, they have the games where they are aren't doing brilliantly but they're still making the chances they're still getting in the shots and they're having them on target etc you've got to keep that partnership going because it will just ruin it and you don't want to get to that point um, as I've said about the sloppy set pieces it's got to be worked on during the international break I think Woodgate um, pointed that out he said we're going to work really hard during the international break yes we're going to have players that are going out to play for their countries and um, we're hoping that they all come back fully fit uh, no injuries because we don't want that to ruin our season um, but the lads that are going to be at training they can focus on these set pieces and you know get get fit themselves because it could be their chance there could be an injury to one of the star men that we've got at the moment in the first 11 and the youngsters will be on their toes ready to step up as I'm sure they will be because, you know, to pull on a Borough shirt, 
especially if you're a borough lad, is probably the best thing that could ever happen to you. Um, but just looking at some of the possession we had, we had 57.5 possession and the whole game to their 42.5. Now, I know possession doesn't mean anything, but for a borough side, that is a lot on the ball for us um, because we haven't done it last year season it was shocking it wasn't any great passing it was just long balls and that was it but with Woody we seem to be keeping the ball really close to the floor nice little touches fast feet fast passing and it's great to see um, now the question is that I want to ask everyone now do you feel like it is a good point or do you feel that it's three points lost now answer that in this in the um, question box below, um, you know, in the comments. Let me know what you think. I feel that just from being there and how we play, I feel that we've lost three points. I know we've got a point, but I just feel like we've lost three because we deserved so much more. We deserved all three, and just to get a point is hard to take. Um. We had more shots as well. And that's a thing that you don't see with Borough teams anyway. So, you know, to see us having more shots on goal is even better. Um, we were much better in the attacking third on in the first half and the second half. Um, they had their chances where they had um, their big six-foot centre-back, I think it's Webster, who hit the post with a clear header again on his own clear chance um, was able to hit the post um, and they had the chances where Randolph had to pull out absolutely phenomenal saves there was a save where it looked like it was just going to dip straight into the top corner and he just punches it straight over um, you know if that man wasn't in between our sticks we'd be in a lot of trouble we really would um, now we started the game in 17th and we've dropped down to 18th due to other teams from winning on the weekend um, now to see us 18th is hard and I know it's early in the season but you know you don't want to be there you really don't I mean some of the teams that are around us um, you've got some of the new boys like Luton but Derby aren't that far off us um, Blackburn all these teams and you know I can't see us getting promotion this year just because I think Woody just wants to build a squad before he goes into promotion mode. Um, yes, Gibbo probably wants promotion. Um, we all want promotion, there's no doubt about it. But can you really see it this season? I can see a mid-table finish, maybe top 10, but I can't see promotion. Um, I hope I'm wrong, I really do, I really do. Because it'd be nice to go back to the Premier League because we are a Premier League side. Um, yes, we don't have the money or the players at the moment, but you know, you get promotion, you get that big pay rise, and that will help us to get a team that we can build upon. You know, grab some free agents. I mean, look at Norwich; they get Timo Pukki, a free agent. Look at the guy now; absolutely fantastic. He absolutely pissed it in this league, scoring goals left, right, and centre. You know, if we can pick up a player like that for Borough, it'd be brilliant. Um. I've talked about the players that I felt were really good, you know, Dale Fry, Johnson, Clates, Fletch, Britt, Randolph, um, just Bowler and Jick Steele, I feel that could do with a bit more work, but they are getting into the team, so, you know, it's going to take them a bit of a while to gel. Um, it was a shame not to see Marcus Brown as well come on, along with Tav. Um, I thought those two would have made a difference because Brown's got a bit of an attitude, um, so to see him get on the ball and, you know, push people around, get into tackles. That would have been nice to see. And Tav, young player, very fast, skillful. I thought he would have made a bit more of a difference at Bristol. Um, um, then you have Rudy Gestad who comes on for about three minutes. Um, now he's not everyone's cup of tea due to the fact that, you know, he's had the chance to move on and yet he's refused every time. And he's just sitting at Borough on the bench getting a, wage basically that's all he's getting um, but at the same time it was nice to see Usborough fans cheering his name 
when it came to corners or he had the ball, etc. But at the same time, he did walk off. He didn't really applaud the fans. Now that's probably because of the abuse he receives, which is fair enough. But, you know, even just give us a quick clap, walk off. That's all you need to do. Um, but, you know, you get the passion from Leo at the end. As you can see in my match day vlog yesterday, absolutely love that man. You know, he's grabbing the badge. He's banging on his chest. He's putting a love heart to us all. I love that man at Borough. Um, absolutely fantastic. But yeah, guys, um, I hope you have enjoyed this video. I'm sorry it's late. It's just because I've been working and it's hard to get videos out. I know some people can do all that in one day, but with me, I'm just absolutely shattered. Might be old age, but, you know, I'm getting there. Um, so, yeah, make sure you leave a like. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and there'll be more content out for us on this channel. Um, next game is Reading at the Riverside. Hopefully we come back off the international break and grab a three points. Um, I won't be at that game, unfortunately, but I'm going to try and get to Birmingham. I'm definitely going to Cardiff. Um, so there will be more vlogs, previews and match reviews out on this channel. And if you can think of anything else you would like me to do, just drop it in the comment section and uh, I'll see what I can do. Because I'd like to do some new things. I'm thinking of doing some vlogs, like daily vlogs. Um, just of my life really, see what I can do, see if I can get anything interesting, like me working out or walking around Swansea on the beach, etc. Showing you different views. But yeah guys, thanks again for tuning in and uh, being a part of my channel, I really appreciate it. And I'll catch you all guys soon. Peace.